Hey guys, Hackers Floyd here, back again with another video and welcome to the Shell Scripting course. Now, you might be a little bit confused as to why I'm making this course, but this was probably the highest requested series on the channel. And, uh, you know, after giving it a lot of consideration, I think it is is extremely important for me to cover this. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So, uh, for those of you who are new to the whole idea of bash scripts, you might be wondering what they are and what they do. Well, simply, uh, simply put, bash scripts allow you to execute commands from a file. Now, the thing that many people don't understand here, or the thing that people don't, uh, they don't really get to understand is the fact that the interpreter is the shell. That's the brilliant thing about this. Now, when, when I say that the interpreter is the shell, you pretty much get to understand that with a bash or with a bash script, you have unlimited functionality when it comes down to the Unix toolset. All right. So what do I mean by this? Uh, if you're performing uh, Python scripting, the whole idea of modules come, comes into play. But if I'm using bash scripting to create a script, for example, it is much more convenient and will work pre pretty much all the time without me having to install dependencies or additional, or additional uh, extensions or modules for that matter. Okay, so uh, that being said, I am going to be uh, covering Python scripting. I have covered it before, but I'll be covering that in depth. Uh, and I want to really explain, you know, functions because I haven't touched upon that for, uh, you know, in a while. But that being said, why uh, why is bash scripting preferred over Python scripting? And of course, that is a very, uh, that's a very opinionated statement. And I do agree. But if you ask any systems administrator, they will go with bash scripting like 100% of the time over Python, because when you compare them, Python is less reliable when it comes down to bash. And again, I said that because it's going to use the shell as the interpreter. The shell is built in with Unix and it will it'll enable you to utilize the entire Unix tool set. That means you can control sockets with, just by typing in each command, uh, each command on each line, you know? So it's really even very intuitive for a person to understand it. Now, uh, the, what is bash scripting very good at? Number one, file management. All right. With bash scripting, and as I've mentioned, systems administrators, they can vouch for this, that bash scripting allows you to copy files, update files, backup files, almost on an aut fully automated basis. And I've seen many of these systems administrators as well as when I was one, you know, creating bash scripts to do anything from all the, uh, all the way from querying a data in an Excel word sheet, uh, to, uh, to compiling data, uh, getting figures, producing mass amounts of data, which I know, again, many of you will argue Python is the king of data, uh, you know, and data science, but uh, Bash is pretty good, to be honest. The only, w uh, the only area where it falls off a little bit is when it comes down to huge calculations, you know, calculations that involve statistics and the merging of all other types of data. So that's where it kind of lags off. And you can understand why it's really focused on a, on a system. It's focused more on controlling a system. So it's really good for running, uh, for file management, running scripts and programs and for automating tasks. Now I'm going to be showing you how to write a few cool scripts uh, that allow you to, you know, whether you want to call them pen testing scripts or whatever. Uh, and the reason again, I was forced to make this course is because, uh, I was having a discussion with one of the subscribers on Facebook and they, they didn't quite understand how exactly we were like when performing privilege escalation and you're trying to use python to spawn a shell uh, or a uh, or a bash instance uh, how how that was happening and again this came from uh, this question was raised because they did not understand a thing about bash and how the shell how powerful the terminal as we call it is you know in regards to controlling every aspect of the system now, that being said, what we will be looking at in this series will range from, you know, from very basic things to an advanced uh, type of uh, to an advanced type of videos. Uh, we'll be focusing on creating on script and that's how I want to keep it. So we'll be focusing on constants, uh, input, output, uh, conditional statements like if else loops, variables, functions, etc. And then also file management. We'll look at all of that. So I'll be showing you how to create a lot of awesome scripts, even for those of you who, who use Raspberry Pis, uh, you know, for automation and for various different things. I'll show you how to write even cooler scripts for that as well. All right. So my environment is pretty simple and you can use this on any Linux slash Unix operating system. 
Uh, I re- really don't know what you want to call it, uh, but many have different opinions about it. The, and uh, the editor I'll be using is going to be Sublime Text. Now, of course, you can use whatever you want. I just like Sublime Text for Bash uh, or for Bash scripting is be- uh, because of its, uh, it's just really, really simple for me. Uh, and uh, the, you can use any, but for me, I just prefer using Sublime Text. All right, so I'm going to be using Sublime Text and let's get started. So before we create our first shell script or uh, or, or our bash script, uh, our bash script uh, it's very important to understand uh, how data is uh, is handled and how and when I talk about uh, the shell being the uh, being the interpreter, what I mean by this. Now, of course, you might be saying, well, Python also has an interpreter that is based on a command line. Well, that's slightly does its own interpreter, which as you see causes problems, especially for those of you who really are moving back and forth from Python 3 to Python 2. All right, so let's say I wanted to just, you know, create a simple script that will display the word hello, you know, so to do that, as you know, I type in echo. If you didn't know, echo essentially displays uh, the text. It's essentially echoing the text back to you. All right, so I type in echo and I just type in hello. Now, this is uh, primarily a, a shell script. What do I mean by this? It's simply a command that the shell will interpret. And I type in enter. You can see that it is interpreted and it has understood what we are trying to say. Now, of course, I can I can complicate it as much as I want. I can say uh, hello. Uh, or we can just you can write whatever you want. But the whole idea is is that the shell as probably not a lot of you understand, can do a lot of things. Now, when I talk about scripting, this essentially is the, uh, it, it essentially allows you to execute a lot of these commands from a file, okay, from a file. That's the whole idea of a script, remember, from a file. But when I talk about the shell, the shell can run commands that you want it to. The problem is many people have forgotten how powerful it is. So, let's create our first uh, shell script. All right, so to do that, I'm just going to open up Sublime Text here. And uh, in, I'm, I'm just going to be covering how to create it. In the next video, we'll get started with variables because I really do want to cover this. So let me just zoom in. All right, so when we talk about creating a shell script, you know that the extension is a shell extension. So let me just create a new file and I will save it to my desktop. Uh, sorry, let me just save this uh, to my desktop uh, right here, desktop. And I'll call this uh, simple dot sh all right dot sh is the extent extension we use for shell scripts so dot s uh, dot sh and i'm gonna hit save and as you can see it's right on the desktop now all right but remember it has nothing in it so even if we were to execute it uh nothing will come of it so what's the first thing we need to do the first thing we need to do is we need to declare what interpreter we're going to be using this is where a lot of people don't understand they have seen something like this all right so they've seen um, they, 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 usually what happens is they, 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 they come across something like this. And I know you guys are going to be like, well, what exactly do you mean? Well, uh, they come across something like this. All right. And I, I failed to, to explain it, uh, in Python, but let me explain it now. When I type this in, this is called the shebang. I'll, I'll get, I know it sounds uh, quite funny, but I'll get to, to what this is in a second. This is called the shebang primarily because of, um, of the uh, the different meanings of, uh, of for example this is a sharp and this uh, is used for the music uh, and the uh, the bang annotation in music so from that they essentially determined to call it shebang all right so anything after a shebang in a script uh, will essentially be used as the interpreter okay now in this case the bash is going to be the interpreter remember it can also be python Python can also be used as the interpreter, as we saw in the Python scripting uh, in, when we were creating our reverse shells uh, and our clients, etc. In this case, it can be it can be either the bash, it can be the bash, it can be the shell. As you have probably noticed when performing privilege escalation, you might be saying, "Hey, man, what's the difference? The shell is different from the bash. The bash is considered to be a terminal instance, which gives you a much more streamlined um, streamlined." Uh, what's the correct word for this experience when it comes down to using the uh, Linux op- or Unix operating system. The shell is simply the shell, the interpreter of commands. 
Uh, and as you know, this does not give you full access in, in terms of functionality. You then have the other interpreters that are not really used that much nowadays, which are the CSH and the ZSH or the KSH, which I'm not going to go into, but they have very, very different, they, they vary in terms of their functionality. So we are going to be using the bash. All right. So once we have said this, what this means is I want you to use this as our interpreter. Fair enough. All right. So now we can run our simple script here. Our simple script is going to simply display uh, the words hello world. Now, of course, I'm going to use the parentheses here just to make sure that everything I type within them is printed out. So I can say hello. Uh, oops, sorry, my bad. <laughs> hello world. Uh, and uh, this is the first uh, uh, shell script. All right. There we are. Fantastic. So uh, now if we save this, uh, just give me a second. Let's save this and... Uh, if we can open up our terminal here, uh huh, and uh, wait, what's my current working directory? All right, so cd. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, <coughs> cd root and desktop, and let's see what's in there. All right, so now, as you probably would have known from my other videos, executing a script is quite simple. All we do is we select the interpreter. When we're executing a Python script, we can use Python. And uh, some of you have noticed when you use Python, it works most of the time. And have you realized something that, for example, if it was a Python script, a very poorly designed Python script, and we try and execute it like this, this essentially means we are specifying the, we are essentially saying use the specified interpreter. And in, in that script, the developer has not specified the interpreter. What happens is if we try and use this to execute a Python script, for example, it will not run. You'll get an invalid argument specification. What that means is that the developer has not specified what to use as the interpreter. And again, you can understand why that is considered bad practice. Always specify the interpreter so that people can launch the scripts without specifying the interpreter intentionally. Remember? All right. So if we try and, uh, if we try and run this simple script, um, for some reason, you'll see that, um, for, wait, give me a second, guys. Uh, yeah, you'll see that we cannot, uh, we cannot, uh, we can also, we, we, we cannot really use the, uh, the tab auto completion. And that's because the permissions in regards to the script, oops, uh, my keyboard today is really letting me down. Uh, the permissions in regard, in regards to the script clearly determine here that we, we can only read the file, but we cannot execute. So, as I've mentioned before, we can use the, uh, we can change the permissions of the executable file. Now I'll be explaining permissions and why they're important with running uh, the, uh, the scripts, because you might want to uh, have a script run by a certain user. We'll get to that, but for now, let me just make sure that we can execute it. And we use the chmod plus X and we spend, we specify the script and we hit enter. And now if you list it, you can see that it's going to be highlighted in a green hue. All right, so I'm going to run the script, so simple. And if I hit enter, you can see it's going to display what we wanted it to display. Now, of course, this is very simple, but what I want to explain is the syntax right from the beginning, because I've seen a lot of developers, even people, you know, systems admins that are working for huge companies really don't understand what, what, the, what interpreter they're using. And, you know, they, they, they usually find out that th their scripts are not executed by certain users, file permissions, etc. It's really a big, it's a big task to understand, uh, you know, shell scripting. But once you do, it really is a powerful, a really, really powerful tool or language for that matter to know. Okay, so now you might be saying, well, what if, what if, Alexis, what if I wanted to revert the permissions that I've given this script? Well, to do that, we run the chmod. But instead of the, the, the plus X, we use the minus X and then we say simple dot sh. And now if you list the files in here, you can see that it is back to having uh, the permissions as read only. Fantastic. So now you know how to create your first shell script and you know about file permissions and you know about interpreters and the different interpreters you can use. Now remember, this is global knowledge when it comes down to uh, to selecting your interpreter, this is quite universal and is extremely important when creating scripts. Now, of course, this is a, an extremely simple script, but in the following videos, we'll get started with the real, real, real nitty gritty of shell scripting. 
That being said, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks on my website, and I'll be sure to leave your reply, and uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.